We want to greet the church in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The service of Holy Communion does not begin at the table. It begins in John chapter 13 when Christ instructs his disciples that they must prepare for him to wash their feet. Often in our churches, we will read a verse before the bread and we will read the verse before the wine, but we make the mistake. We never read what he said before the foot washing, as if foot washing is a different service. It too is significant. Jesus says to them, I must wash your feet, and Peter protests. Peter says, I am already clean, and Jesus says, if I do not wash your feet, you have no share in my kingdom. What did Jesus mean? In their culture, whenever a stranger was traveling, as you entered the house where you would be hosted, and this you will see when Abraham was sitting under a tree and two angels passed by. The Bible says he asked them to enter his house. What was the first thing he did? In their culture, you were supposed to wash the feet of your visitor, not inside the house. You must wash the feet of your visitor outside so that your neighbors could see you. What did it mean for them? When you were washing the feet of your visitor, you were telling your neighbors that someone has entered my property whom I value more than myself. Should you, my neighbors, choose to attack my property, know that I will sacrifice myself and my family to protect the stranger that is now inside my gate. What Jesus was saying to Peter is this. An attack is coming. I must wash your feet so that the enemy will know I would rather die before the enemy gets to you. You are my honored guest and the enemy will have to go through me before the enemy touches you. Foot washing is when church members declare the enemy will have to go through me before the enemy reaches you. This is why I do not want you to take for granted what you do when you do foot washing. It is an oath between us. When we wash each other's feet as men, we are saying, never will there come a time when I look at your wife and see a girlfriend. Never will there come a time when a bank will take your house and I am alive. This is something the Christian church has truly misunderstood. Wash no one's feet unless you are ready to protect them when the enemy comes. Because it is an oath before heaven, just as Jesus was making an oath to the disciples, that now that I have washed your feet, the enemy will never touch you. He must come through me first. It is also important that when we consider foot washing, we remember. Holy Communion, the Sabbath, and the marriage are three gifts that God gave to all believers. They are not owned by any church. Holy Communion, the Sabbath, and the marriage are God's gifts to all believers. You do not need to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to eat communion with us. You do not even need to be baptized. The instruction was, do this in remembrance of me. Secondly, as a church, when we do Holy Communion, it is officiated by pastors and elders who are ordained on either field. But be clear, Jesus did not say, do this in remembrance of me, subject to availability of ordained leaders. Yeah. Holy communion can be done at home when there has been friction. It is your right as a family 
to wash each other's feet, to go to the shops, purchase the bread and the wine, bless it, and lead each other through a service like this. There is no requirement for the church to be lords over this ceremony. It is God's gift to all believers. Here we will officiate. In your homes, do this in remembrance of him. Do not wait for the quarterly services as administered by the church. When a husband and a wife have had an incident at home, let us say a case of adultery. As you reunite, you have a right to call your pastor or your elder. If they are not available, you are the priest in the context of the home. Go, purchase, bless, consecrate your family. And so as we do this here, we merely demonstrate, lastly, when Jesus left, he made it clear that if he was going to be around, he would have done this himself. However, because he was living, he left it to us. This is why I need you to understand. No pastor, elder, or deacon, or deaconess seated on this table right now is qualified to do this. We are standbys because the true high priest had to live. As I stand here, nothing about my pastoring, eldership, or ministry qualifies me to do this. I am a mortal standby in a ceremony that Christ has promised that he will return and will officiate himself. When that day comes, neither I nor any ordained minister, elder, deacon, nor deaconess shall be necessary. So I ask you to understand when we file in this way, we are in no way is the personification of holiness. Christ himself is the only one holy enough to do this. We merely fulfill the instruction, do this in remembrance of me. Mark chapter 14 from verse 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, for this is my body. What does this body do for you? What is the purpose of eating? The prophet Isaiah reminds you, the body has a role to play. The prophet says to us, He was bruised, broken and beaten, for our transgressions. That is good, but what does it mean? Isaiah concludes it. And therefore, by his stripes, we are healed. This evening, when you participate in your Holy Communion, I would like you to do an act of faith. I would like you to eat this, if not on behalf of your sick body. Could you this evening eat? on behalf of a sick relative that you know, a sick friend that you know. Because the scripture says, it was broken, his body was broken, so that you and I might be healed. You may be sick yourself this evening. You may be knowing a relative that is sick. There's a colleague who may have left to do chemotherapy during the year and you are looking forward to see them when the job opens or the company opens, I challenge you this evening, eat this bread for the healing of the nations. Wherever healing is needed, not spiritually now, we will get to the spiritual. We are eating for the physical healing, for your healing, for the healing of relatives, for the healing of a neighbor, for the healing of a friend, whether it be mental, whether it be in the blood or in the bones, whether it be in the cells, wherever the sickness is, he says, take and eat. For this is my body for your healing. We are going to kneel. And as we kneel, 
Pastor Tebe will bless the breaking of the bread. We will kneel in the front. I invite you to bow your heads as you prayerfully join us. <laughs>